Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and in this video, we're going to be converting the area covered by microbes. So here's a petri dish covered by all sorts of microbes. And if we assume that those are all E. coli cells and that E. coli have a standard size, we can actually figure out how many cells are in that are growing in this petri dish. So in order to do that, we first need to know uh, how big an E. coli cell is. Roughly, based on our friend Wikipedia, uh, an E. coli cell is between 1 and 2 micrometers long and 0.25 micrometers uh, long. We're going to call it 2 micrometers for the sake of this example. And so in order to get the area of one rectangular face of this bacteria, we'll multiply the height times the length. So that's 2 times 0 0.25 is 0 0.5, and it's micrometers, not millimeters, but micrometers squared. One micrometer is the same as one ten thousandth of a centimeter. So in our, um, like we know that this Petri dish here is nine centimeters across and if we round to the tenths it's 63.6 .6 centimeters squared is the area of this petri dish so that's in centimeters squared and we know that these bacteria we know their size in micrometers squared so one of the steps in figuring out the area is going to be going from centimeters squared to micrometers squared one centimeter times one centimeter is one centimeter squared. And since one centimeter equals 10,000 micrometers, if we do the same thing, 10,000 micrometers times 10,000 micrometers equals 100 million micrometers squared. Like these are equivalent numbers. So this is another unit conversion, conversion factor that we can use to help us figure out how many E. coli are actually in our Petri dish, how many are growing there. Now we're gonna work through three examples. Let's look at this first one. How many E. coli cells are on a 3.9 centimeters squared Petri dish, or are on that much of a Petri dish? So just like every other Unit conversion by multiplying fractions, you start by taking what you know and turning it into a fraction by putting it over one. Since it is unit conversion, don't forget to use units at every step. These are our two conversion factors right here. And I'm trying to go from what I have, centimeters squared, to number, I wanna know how many E. coli cells. So I'm gonna to have to use both of these steps because um, I can go centimeter squared to micrometer squared using this conversion factor, and then I can go micrometer squared to cells using this one. So I'm going to multiply. Now, since I have centimeter squared in the numerator of this fraction, I'm going to need to put centimeter squared in the denominator of the second fraction. And 100... B million, not billion, 100 million. It's very important when you're doing these to pay attention to your zeros because you can get a little out of hand. All right, and then now that like those will cancel out eventually, now we can go and use this one. And again, since we have micrometer squared on the top here, you're going to put micrometer squared on the bottom. So 0 0.5 micrometer squared equals one E. coli cell. All right, so I have it all set up. I can now cancel out my units, which is nice, then multiply across the numerators. So 3.9 times 100 million times one. Let's put that in our calculator here, clear. 3.9 times 100, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So being sure 
right? I have eight zeros here, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight zeros here. All right, equals that. Times one is going to be the same. I'll type it just for fun. But this is going to give us three, nine, and then seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. E. coli cells, but that was just the numerator, divided by 1 times 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So then we need to actually do that. So we'll divide by 0 0.5 equals 7, 8, and then let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. E. coli cells. Now be sure that you put your commas in the right place. Now you could turn this in scientific notation, but we are not doing that for this current video. Scientific notation is a whole nother video. So for right now, we're just gonna keep it whatever it reads out on our calculator. And there you go, that's the first one. Let's try two more examples. This one, how many E. coli cells are on 31.8 square centimeters of a Petri dish? So, 31.8 centimeters squared, take what we know, turn it into a fraction by putting it over one. We're gonna use this same series of, um, we're gonna use this same series of unit conversion, or of conversion factors, centimeters here, one centimeter squared, and we're putting 100,000, or 100 million micrometers squared up here, times the size of one E. coli, so one E. coli equals 0 0.5 micrometers squared, and now it's time to cancel those units, cancel, 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 multiply across. All right, 31.8 times 100 million times one. So 31.8 times 100, one, two, three, one, two, three, equals. All right, let's, just be sure. let's count our zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three, one, eight. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divided by 0 0.5, and this is E. coli cells. All right, now we're going to do that math. Divided by 0 0.5 equals 636, six, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. And so our answer is six billion three hundred and sixty million E. coli cells. You have to write E. coli cells because that is the unit that you're working with. All right, now this last one is a little different because this number is even bigger. And so what you see on your calculator is going to look really different once we do it. All right, so. As always, set up what you've got, put it over one. Multiply by the conversion factor that's gonna get you what you want in the end. So again, 100 million micrometers squared over one centimeter squared. That's a whole lot of little micrometers that you could fit in one centimeter box. And then again, that's one E. coli is equivalent to 0 0.5 micrometers squared. Cancel, 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 multiply across. Now again, it, your calculator is going to do some funny stuff that you might not be used to if you're in middle school. 123.1 times 100 million. So one, two, three, six. And that gives us this. One point, sorry, not times, but equal. 
1.231. Now this here, what this is, is times 10. This little hat says to put this next 10 in the exponent. That's what this means. Now for the sake of your test that's coming up, it is fine if you write exactly what's on here. So if you wrote, but in it, well, hold on, because guess what? You're not done. Just like I almost made a mistake that a lot of you do sometimes. One times one, forget that denominator. Don't forget it. Divided by 0 0.5 E. coli cells. All right, so this is what our calculator gave us, but don't stop here just because it looks weird. You still need to divide by 0.5. Got to use our denominator there. And it gives us something else weird. 2.462 times 10. And that means to the exponent with a 10 for an exponent. Which just means the reason your calculator does this is because this number has so many zeros. That's like saying 2.462 times 10. Times 10, 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 times 10. That's a lot. That's too many zeros for your calculator. So it puts it in this form, which is scientific notation. You could put this exact answer on your quiz, and that would be fine. But that's just saying that is how many little E. coli cells, tiny E. coli cells, will be living and growing on your Petri dish. And since it represents E. coli cells, we're going to write E. coli cells because that's our unit. And that would be our final answer. All right, I hope seeing all those uh, examples will help you be able to work these problems.